When we look at assets and bases, there's three definitions that we typically use. The first is the most limiting, and that is the Arrhenius asset and base definition. And that's simply that you've got H plus and OH minus. More encapsulating is the Bronsted Lowry assets and bases. So that definition is that you've got proton donors and proton acceptors. And finally, the one that is most encapsulating of um, types of acids and bases is that of a Lewis acid and base. And Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors and Lewis bases are electron pair donators. So that's what we have as um, different types of definitions of acids and bases. We're gonna consider the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases for now. So if we have an acid like HBr that is reacting with a base, so this would be our acid, or this would be our acid, and our base is NH3. What we have is we establish an equilibrium. So the reaction is going back and forth, and we haven't really been able to tell yet which side of the reaction is favored. By reacting as an acid, HBr gives us a conjugate base. So that's sort of like the conjugate base pair to the acid of HBr that you start with. It's the thing that you've lost your H plus from. The conjugate acid, on the other hand, is one that has um, a positive charge, which I am writing in right now, and that has um, the extra hydrogen. So it starts off as a base, we end up as a conjugate acid. Now, just like we started using curved arrows to show resonance, we can show reactions through the use of curved arrows as well. So the way that we would do that is like we did with the resonance forms, we take where the electrons are going from and showing where they react to. So again, that can happen when you break a bond within a molecule or long distance. So the electrons from the base are going to go and grab the hydrogen. That's what makes this new bond right here, okay? And again, you would have a positive charge there that I failed to write in earlier, sorry. Um, meanwhile, the electrons that come out of this bond end up going to the bromine that is right here. So one of those would be that extra lone pair that used to be part of the bond. So if we look at an overall reaction, we can say that if we have an acid that I'm gonna represent as HA and a base that I'm gonna represent as just B, the acid is going to form the conjugate base, A minus, and the base is going to form the conjugate acid. And that conjugate acid may again have a positive charge. If we're looking at um, acids, we can define the strength of the acid based on how that acid behaves in water, which means that the base is water. You may not realize this, but when we're dealing with um, pH, pH is defined based on uh, things reacting in water. So if you change to methanol, that is no longer the pH because it's called per hydrogen based on it being in water. So here we have the acid, but the base is now just water. And so the conjugate acid would also be um, the hydronium ion. So we can look at KEQ, which you may already recall from past chemistry classes, as being defined as products over reactants. So here we would have the product being H3O plus times the concentration of A minus divided by HA and the concentration of H2O plus. I went ahead and transcribed this to the top of the next page so we can discuss that some more. Here's the thing. We can pull out the constant for water because it's very, very, very high in comparison to everything else. 
So it almost changes a negligible amount. So we call this Ka, which is sort of like the same thing as Keq of water. And Ka is defined, therefore, as the concentration of H3O plus times the concentration of A minus all over the concentration of HA, so of your original acid. That means that high Ka's are very strong acids because what that means is that they have been deprotonated. They have reacted um, nearly fully from the left-hand side of the reaction to the right-hand side. So that would be a very strong acid. But more often, we use, like we did with pH, a different term. We use something called pKa partially because those Ka's get so large that they get really hard to manage. So pKa's are based on the negative log of Ka, which means that they will usually be around negative 10 to 50. Since this is the negative log, that means that lower pKa's are going to be stronger acids. So it's just the opposite. Each whole number on the scale, therefore, is an order of magnitude. So if you have a pKa of 5, that's going to be 10 times stronger than that of 6. Okay, so if you have lower pKa's or stronger acid, that also means that higher pKa's are stronger bases. But that refers to the strength of the conjugate base. So let's look at that some more, okay? So if I am going to look at... Uh, two different types of acid here. Let's say that we're going to look at this guy. He's got a pKa of 16. Reacting with water, electrons would come from that oxygen over to this hydrogen, and then that would then move back towards that oxygen. So this would be the conjugate base. This pKa, on the other hand, is 38. So if, again, you have oxygen coming in, grabbing that hydrogen right there, and giving you this conjugate base, that is a much weaker acid than this one. So another way to put that, if this is the strongest acid, has the lower pKa, that means that those of the two, the conjugate base for this one would be a stronger base. So we could sort of say that in two different ways, and that's how we do it. On to the next video.